Good morning. Nice fall morning. Nice and comfortable, low humidity. A little bit on the cloudy side and leaves are falling. Well, I went out for my McDonald's coffee and egg and cheese on a biscuit that I mostly get every morning or most every morning. And I got back about, oh, I would say about 9.15 in the morning. And uh, somebody left me an item on my front porch. Oh, there goes a chipmunk. Um, I'm going to show you it. I need this like a hole in the head. <laughs> I have no idea. I have a rough idea who left it. There's only a couple of guys that I know that would leave me something like this. Yes, a 16 millimeter sound projector without a take-up reel. <laughs> now, I don't own any 16 millimeter sound films. I've gotten rid of them all when I got rid of the uh, slot load. I can't remember the name of it, a Kai or something like that. Projector, I had sold that. That was given to me by a friend of mine, but I just don't have the room. Uh, it was very, very, very musty, and it had a lot of, um, mildew and everything all on the inside here, and I had cleaned it up with some Lysol wipes and stuff like that, and I have yet to unravel the speaker wire here and take a... Lysol wipe and run it down the cord and, you know, clean that off. Uh, when I saw this on the front porch, this is what I was looking at. And I said, this is either a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder or a movie projector. And it's very heavy. Well, I'm cleaning it up, but I can't do much else with it. It works. The knobs have got uh, some weird stuff on it, and so does the plastic. It's got that white fungus stuff on it, and I tried oil, I tried uh, Lysol wipes, and I can't get very much of it off. Some screwdrivers and stuff like x -Lite screwdrivers and stuff that I've had in my toolbox, uh, some of them get like that. It, there is a, a plastic uh, uh, disease or something. I don't know what it is. That you really need to take a take the knobs off and take a brush to these. I'm using the Kodak ZE1, so I can't get really close. But you can see that anyways. And like I say, the model... No, I didn't say what the model was. I'll tell you what the model is. It's a Kodak AV, like Audio Video-085, right here. And um, here is an outlet for plugging in something. Um, volume. You can hear the bass increase when you turn the tone control down. So it's, an a it's not a, a treble cut. It is actually a true co tone control. You turn it down, you don't hear much. Turn, turn the volume up, turn it down, so it's very, very little harm. I don't feel the speaker vibrating. In other words, uh, filter capacitors are probably okay. Uh, it's got an exciter lamp, which is lit in here. You probably can see a little light through it. Uh, the projector does work. And this is the rewind, which I found out. And the projector bulb does work. It's a 750 watt bulb. But I don't own a 16 millimeter film and I don't want to start getting into that hobby again because I just don't have the room. 
And this was a little smaller than the uh, Ikai, I think it was. I'm trying to remember. Several years back, I made a video on that projector. It was a slot load. And at that time, I did own a few 16 millimeter sound films. As I recall now, I don't think I have any. Uh, if I still have films, it's in the old house and that's all closed up and uh, secured and I can't get into it. Uh, the cord on this was all, it had like all like uh, mildew all over it. So I wiped it down, which I brought in from the house. And um, I cleaned everything up with them as much as I could. And the amplifier needs to be taken out. The whole unit needs to be taken out and uh, probably cleaned. Uh, what I'm going to do is just close it up and stick some dryer sheets in here to, you know, when I close the cover. When I put this cover back on, I'll just put a bunch of dryer sheets in here. And um, either put it in here, I hate to put it in the main shed, but wherever it was stored, it was probably stored in the shed similar to what I have, and everything that goes into the shed, it gets musty, even though the shed don't leak, it's just dampness. Uh, in the shop here, I don't have too much of a problem, because I run my little electric heater, which is 250 watts, constantly 24-7 when it's cold and in the wintertime. Um, so that's what I did, and I, I don't seem to have any problems. Um, with dampness in here, but whatever I bring in is damp. Okay, so that is what I found on the front porch this morning. So, like I say, there are only, I think, three guys that I know that may do this, and I never requested a 16 millimeter movie projector. Now, when I was living in New London in that two-family house and I had my workshop in the attic. I would love something like this, but I've been out of the film hobby for quite a while. And the only reason several years back I got back into it a little bit is because I was given a 16 millimeter sound projector. And I got rid of it, and now I got now I got another one, and I'm not going to be able to. I just can't get back into this hobby. So whoever gave this to me, I appreciate it, and I will uh, not, you know, uh, scrap it or anything like that. It's too good to scrap. Um, I may try to sell it or something. Uh, it like is. It does work. It took me a while to figure out how to release this gate and it just push it like that and it closes okay it just you know goes right on to the it's got a little hook on to the lens mount here and it's manual threading which is what i like and this must be the roller for the loop the lower loop it gives you the threading down here there's a diagram you may not see it too good with this camera, but uh, it's right down here. The whole threading information is here. This plate here is a little loose, but I guess other than making a little vibration, it shouldn't be a problem. You have a silent and a sound position, and it does not shut off the amplifier. Hear it? Makes no difference. What that does is it brings the film speed down just a little bit, which you may or may not notice on the camera, but I'm not going to go through all the motions of this projector because um, I just wanted to show what I, what I received. So what I'm going to do is to close this up, but before I do, I'm going to pull out all this cord here, which is quite long. And I'm going to wipe it down with the uh, Lysol uh, dual action wipe and clean them up a little bit. And then when this cord is out of the way, I'm going to clean a little more in here and um, dry it up good. And then I'm going to put some uh, of these uh, dryer sheets in, which will sweeten it up a little bit. <laughs> Because, I mean, 
it's great. It's a great piece of vintage equipment. But I just don't have the room for it. I don't even have the room for this little guy here, this reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder. Now, I don't want to get into a long discussion, but there's one of my viewers, he, he posts humongously long posts about special take-up reels and everything on this reel-to-reel, -reel, this Sony reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder here. Uh, a take-up reel is a take-up reel. It does not matter what you put on it for a take-up reel. So I don't want to get off the subject too much, but uh, this is a simple half-track, as far as I know it's half-track, audio reel-to-reel -reel machine. We're talking about the Sony right here. We're not talking about the movie projector. We're talking about the Sony um, Model 101 here. All you need on a, a, re, a vintage tape recorder is a 7-inch take-up reel. Um, it works. I ran it to its paces. It works pretty good. I did not try recording on it because I really don't need to record. Basically, what you want is playback. Now... Uh, like I say, I, I try to answer some comments. It's a lot easier by making a video on it rather than, uh, uh, you know, do it with typing because I, I have to really hunt and peck, and it takes me a very long time to type. And it's amazing. Some of these guys, they, they're paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of posting. And I, I'm sorry for anybody who leaves me a post like that, but I don't spend a lot of time reading through it. I'll skim through it. I'll usually read the first paragraph and the end, and I'll skip everything in between on most of them, not all of them, because they're just too damn big and read, hard for me to read. It takes too long. I have to get my face right on top of the computer screen within five or six inches with my reading glasses, and a magnifying glass, and it's just, you know, so I, I, I skim through them. So I have a couple of fellas that mean well, believe me, they mean well. And I'm not sure if this is the same guy that uh, commented on this radio here and the parts. I understand his point of view, like on this Fader 115 down here, uh, <clears throat> if I was to sell that, uh, which I'm going to try to do if I can get a decent price on it. Uh, yes, it's recapped and re-resistored. Every single resistor that's in this chassis... Let me see if I can pick that up without breaking anything. ...is off by 100% or more, with the exception of just one resistor. And... Uh, some people are purists and want to replace resistors with carbon comp, which 90% of the time go up in value. If they're not up in value, now they will. Yes, there are some carbon comp, like in here, okay, that are right on. I agree. So you don't touch them. There are some in my oscilloscope that are right on. Some of them are off, and I replaced them. But most of them are right on because they use a good quality uh, carbon comp. Uh, the same with this here. On this radio, I'm trying to, I'm using the ZE1, but I put a magnifying glass in front of it, but I don't know if you can see that. But I'm going to tell you that the voice coil not only rubs, but with a eye lope, I can see coils of wire, pieces of wire off the voice coil. So in other words, the voice coil in here has become unraveled, and that's why it's making the noise. So I cannot recone that. Um, I just, I can't get behind it. You'd have to, you see, you could cut this all out and probably destroy the cone, okay? So, uh, uh, doing that, then you got the spider, which is, you can't see it from here. 
you know, it's buried. It's buried way behind the frame, and even if I took the speaker out, it's such a low-profile frame. I can't do it. And here's where the, you got the tinsel wire, which you I can't even see, that runs from the lugs over here, and they do not run on the cone, okay? Normally, you'd see two little... Um, wire connections. You like one here and one here with some cement on it and they usually tie the tinsel wire from the terminals on the back to the um, cone itself and then the voice coil would have two little wires coming out. Well this one don't have that. So I'm not sure how this voice coil is connected. It's probably under the spider. So you rip this out and then you bend the cone back. I mean, I don't know any other way to do it. Get in there and cut the spider out. It, it just can't do it. You cannot recone a speaker like this. Uh, so what I would have to do is to literally change the whole speaker magnet field coil assembly as one unit. I'm not going to do that. Okay? I got to I got to look for a 35Z5. I have a couple of feelers out there. I can order one. I I was also told by one of the radio, uh, guys on the antique radio forum put a a 45Z5 in here. Now I'm not sure if the base is the same because that's an extra 10 volt higher on the filament and with today's line voltages uh, these radios were designed to run like on 110. That's a very, very good idea. I've never thought of it. I don't know if the current is the same, though. Uh, again, I'd have to look it up in my tube manual. Um, I used to remember pretty much off the top of my head, which now comes to a point, but that don't mean that I'm sharp. <laughs> anyway, that's an old saying I used to have for many years. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, yes, that's a very good idea. So I could order a 45Z5, and it's two bucks on uh, findatubeibelieve.com, and then there's shipping on top of that. Um, but I was told that he's not exactly fast on his delivery, so I could be waiting a month for this. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. So, yes, I'm going to put a tube in here, then I'm going to take, a clip, take some clip leads and ex put an external speaker on here and um, try it out that way. But as far as the capping of it is concerned, again, I'll say uh, when I do sell this radio, it's going to be partially restored, recapped, and re-resistored because that is just the way it's going to have to be. Some of the purists would say, don't put Chinese modern caps in here. Well, you either do that or, you you know, one of the fellows wants to e even put in... Uh, New old stock wax paper caps. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you want a shelf queen, okay, go ahead and do that. But if you want a shelf queen, just leave it alone. Don't do anything with it. Um, as far as the switch is concerned, I got an email from my good friend Brendan, who is John from Arkansas's mentor. He had an excellent suggestion. He says... These switches need voltage on them in order to, you know, in other words, run it, connect it up. And it'll probably be okay once the voltage goes through the terminals. It helps clean the switches. I never thought of that. Uh, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, maybe it would clear up and the resistance would drop down as you run some voltage through the switch. That's an excellent idea. You know, Brendan is is a very smart guy, and I can see why John from Arkansas has a has him as a mentor. I mean, Brendan don't comment on the videos. I don't even know if he has a YouTube video uh, channel. I'm sure, but he watches the videos, and he's a very smart guy. So um, I will definitely follow his advice, and I will wire this switch in. I will not take it out. So I get a I get a, uh, a tube, a 45Z5, provided the current is the same. 
It's even cheaper than a 35Z5, and I see that on uh, findatube.com. Get a 45Z5 and put it in here, provided it's an octal and provided that the current is the same. I will have to look that up. But I can't do nothing with the speaker, and I can't or will not do anything with this. Uh, Dan Kublu Lights had suggested uh, going to Harbor Freight and getting uh, a needle syringe and inject some glue into here. In other words, you'd poke a hole in here and squeeze this down to flatten it out. Well, Dan, uh, that's a great idea, but in the back here, you may not see that, but shining a light through it, that's all open. That is all open here, all the way through here. So there is nothing to glue this to. See? All this here, the outer perimeter of this dial, is there's no metal behind it. So in other words, the light hits it, it lights up this. So that is, an, that is out. But you know what? I'm going to say it right now. I'm not touching this dial. Let somebody who, you know, if I sell this and get a good price for it, they can do this. They can recone it. I will not pull this out because it will no longer be original. But restoring the capacitors and resistors, like I say, every resistor but uh, two resistors in here are off value. Every single one, except this one, which I think is 130 or 150 ohms, I can't, I'm not sure yet, and this one. These are uh, close enough. These are cathode resistors, as I recall. Okay? Every one was, was off. And I just put another one in here. Uh, it was a 20,000 ohm resistor. It went up to 38,000. So you got to change them. You know, uh, it's funny because these aren't dog bone resistors. These were comp, carbon comp resistors. When I was working on Bob's radio, the TRF radio, those were dog bones, and most of those, believe it or not, were all within 20%, <clears throat> most of them. Very few had to be changed. So uh, carbon comp are not good resistors, especially the older ones. And I can, I can testify to that. I've had brand new carbon comp resistors in my old shop in the attic. And 95% of them have gone up in value. They are not, you do not use them. Use modern resistors. Replace them with carbon film or metal film resistors. If you want something that's going to be lasting, if you want something that looks good and original, yes. Replace them with carbon comp if you want to do that. But it's only going to have to, the resistors are going to have to be changed again. Okay, so any, this radio is I'm going to get the tube in here. I have to order a 35, a 45, I might go with a 45Z5. That was an excellent idea by one of the radio, one of the guys on the antique radio farm. So uh, I'm going to look the specs up on that. And um, from what they say, uh, it's the same tube, just 10 volt more on the filament, which is great for low, uh, high line voltages. I don't have high line voltage here. If we get 118, we're doing good, but it doesn't happen too often. But, you know, when I sell this, I may, you know, I want, I would like it to be working, but again, the speaker's blown. So whoever gets it is going to have to recone the speaker. So uh, it's going to be hard to list. And I am not going to list it. Um, I could I could set it on the antique radio forum uh, 
classifieds, uh, but that might that that I'll trust because those those guys are usually they're honest guys, so I don't think I'd have a problem there. But I probably would not get the price that eBay would get. But you know, anyways, it's going to have to be advertised as. Uh, electronically restored, but speaker needs reconing. And um, so sort of what I'm going to do is when the tube comes in, um, at that point, I will make a video on it, and I will um, clip a speaker on the voice coil uh, terminals on the back here like I tried to do before until I found out my rectifier tube was gone and see if the radio works. I'm jumping all over the place on this video so hopefully I'm not confusing anybody. We're going from the movie projector to the Sony Model 101 reel-to-reel -reel recorder and then we jump back uh, <laughs> to the um, Fader 115. I'm trying to condense everything in one and unfortunately my videos are always too long. I'm going to end this video with the Model 101 Sony uh, Monaural tape recorder. Now, like I say, uh, I've had a couple of fellas, it might even be the same fellow, I don't know, but uh, I mean, he's very knowledgeable and I respect his advice, but um, he's overkill. Uh, a take-up reel is a take-up reel. It does not make a damn bit of difference whether you're playing a 3-inch tape and you're taking it up on a 7-inch reel or you're playing a 3-inch tape and you're playing it on a 3-inch reel. Way back when I started out on tape recorders, I told you I had a Telectro stereo tape recorder. Okay. Also, I've had many small non-capstan rim drive three inch tape recorders. I had a few of them, I shouldn't say many. I also had a three inch capstan drive tape recorder which I made a lot of recordings on and they were done on three inch reels. Family stuff and things like that horsing around when I was younger I just played you know test the tape recorders out acted stupid and silly I was young I was young then so what the hell you know uh, and they were done on three inch monaural half track recorders okay all done at either uh, well yeah the, the, the capstan drive was inch and seven eighths or three and three quarters. That's the, uh, I can't remember the brand, but it was a plug-in um, capstan drive recorder. And I, so I want to be able to play those tapes on a capstan drive recorder. The ones that are called rim drive, which I have in the shed here now in the shop, but it's buried away and I'm not going to dig it out. I will one of these days. Is also are uh, three inch, uses a D-cell to drive the motor, and it has a nine volt battery for the transistor amplifier. But it's non-capstan drive, so uh, I went through this in one of my very old videos that um, at some point along the tape, running it at three and three quarter inches per second or inch and seven eighths, depends on where you have the speed set, uh, the tape is going to sound normal. Then as you go along and more tape is built up on the reel and the original one that was recorded, the speed changes. So you can't really play them on here, but the ones that I recorded with a capstan drive constant speed recorder, yes. So... <clears throat> I'm getting a lecture, so to speak, on uh, if you're going to set, if you're going to uh, align this, <laughs> why do I hell want to align it? Align the heads with the azimuth. Correct. You know how I did it? I use a music tape. 
pre-recorded music tape, and I'd put it on there, and I'd adjust the azimuth on it, and, and the uh, the head alignment. I've done it for years. I never go out and buy test tapes. You don't need that. For the speed, yes, because you need a uh, constant tone, but I never got fussy with it. I, if it sounded good, I left it. I did own a um, alignment tape for seven and a half and three and three quarters. I think a seven and a half, mostly in 15 inches per second, because I had a Revox A77, a professional deck that I got dirt cheap from a guy. It was moving. And uh, I owned that for a few years, so I had my share of tape recorders. So you don't need all this fancy stuff. All you need is a simple take-up reel. If you're running 7-inch tapes, you use a 7-inch take-up reel. If you're running 3-inch tapes or 5-inch reels, which I have quite a few 5-inch, you could use a 7-inch or you could use a 5-inch. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. I'm going to end it on that note because this video is kind of like a, a mishmash of movie projectors, reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorders, and radios. All right, so I'm going to end it on one thing. The speaker is not going to be touched by me. The dial is not going to be touched by me. I'm going to get this radio working if I can. I'm going to try to sell it and get a decent price. It's not that I don't like it, but I could use the money. And I don't want to destroy anything by trying to recone this speaker. I'm not going to succeed on it. I don't have the eyesight for that. I'm not going to ruin this dial uh, by trying to uh, get the uh, bulge out of it. It's got a bulge and it's holding the dial back. It's dragging on it. I'm not going to mess around with it. I'll let somebody who's more uh, knows more about it do it. When it comes to the electronics, I can deal with that. Reconing speakers is not my thing. Thanks for watching.